it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 tarot scopes. First of all, I want to say I hope you have a very safe and happy new year and that you are very responsible as you celebrate. Secondly, thank you guys for being patient with me. These are going to be coming out very slowly because they do take me a lot of time to make while I'm also making personal videos for other 2019 reads. So you are still able to order these right now. I'll probably be doing them all the way until the end of January just because it's going to be 2019 for a couple of months, y'all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just going to be a look at each month with guidance from not only tarot, but numerology and um, any oracle card that wants to come out. So the oracle cards will be drawn beforehand. We will draw the tarot live it will, as I shoot the video and go that way. Some of y'all might have to look at me for a while. We might just look at the cards. It depends on how I feel as I'm recording them. This is my first time to shoot one of these videos, so be patient with me. Last year I did a shorter version of it. So let's talk a little bit about 2019. It is the year of the three. So what does that mean? Communication, creativity, expression. This um, number rep is represented in the tarot by the Empress, the world, and the hangman, right? And so you have to think about the Empress being very creative, the hangman being um, kind of stuck in suspension, right? Because they have to decide what they're going to surrender in order to have the universe. So this is going to be one of those years that you're going to have to creatively communicate and you're going to have to harness your creative energies in order to feel like you're accomplishing what's, ha what's happening. Now, if you are a three in the year of the three, just know that Jupiter is your ruling planet. If you're a three, you can add up your birth date, your birth month and year, and it's going to calculate what what number you're vibrating at, and that'll kind of give you a lot of um, information about how you operate in the world. All right. So if you're interested in a personal read for 2019, hit me up at Ariana Luciano at gmail.com or on the gram at Ariana Luciano. Be blessed, family. Hello, Cancers. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 tarot scope, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs, what's up? I hope you guys are doing super fantabulous, already setting your intentions for the year ahead, utilizing this energy from the Sagittarius um, new moon that hit us on the 7th. So with that being said, this is for Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is an in-depth look for the next 12 months. Use the parts that apply, and if it doesn't fit, baby, don't make it work, all right? Now, your theme this year is medicine. You are definitely your own best medicine. As I look at this card, this is about leadership. This is moving into ruling and controlling. I believe you will be controlling your heart and your mind space this year, coming into full control. Some of y'all may be taking a leap of faith and becoming a leader at your job, in your household, or something of that nature, especially when it comes to natural healing, herbalist, um, making crystal bracelets and necklaces really comes to my head. Um, taking a more holistic view, even if you're a counselor or you're thinking about going into counseling, this is a very holistic field for you. You are in the right field or you're being led that way. All right. This might be a year that you focus more on shamanistic roots. You might be researching more of the occult or something that's drawing you into the space of healing. All right. Because the job of a healer is first we heal ourselves and we figure out what worked and what didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> then we try to help others. All right. Now, oh, I thought I put my timer on. Hold on. Let's get that going. Now, notice this coming in is your past, your present, and your potential. Okay. So if you look at this card, and the reason why I say necklace is look at this beautiful necklace, right? And then we have this beautiful thing on his head, which is really a labyrinth. And I feel like you need some kind of a medallion, some kind of a protection, something on you through this year to keep your heart space connected, possibly with rose quartz, because that is your crystal this year. Now, the Cretan Minotaur is the half man, half bull, and he was trapped in the labyrinth of King Minos. And you see the depiction of the, the maze on his head. Well, that's supposed to like look like our brain. So your mind can serve you well or allows you to go crazy out of control and despair depending on your condition. The question is, has stubbornness or suppressed anger kept you in great trouble in the past and made you feel trapped? The Minotaur asks you now to reflect your thinking about that time. Perhaps you were too bullheaded, and maybe you need to awaken your femininity. The Minoan double axe shown here was used only by women during sacrificial rites in the days of bull worship. 
Thinking about your past now, allow the axis to cut away the attachments you may still have to unsavory situations and emotions. It's time to seek freedom from your own thoughts about the past. It's like you're just like coming through and you're cutting things away. And sometimes we have developed a pattern with um, the things from our past to become of our identity. And that is not an identity. It's not who we are. It is an aspect of us. But who we are is what we are in the moment. All right. Now, this card also shows the Palace of Nos, and this is where Diodalus made wings, uh, made wings of wax and bird's feathers so that he and his son Icarus could fly to freedom. Diodalus escaped, but Icarus' wings melted when he flew too close to the sun, and he died. From what do you need to escape from right now? This is in 2019. Consider the perils you face and how you might get burned. Don't do anything hasty this year. With patience, you will find the light at the end of the tunnel. It's almost like you have to be very patient with yourself, Cancer. If you're getting over a broken heart, if you're getting over something from the past, do not compare yourself with others. You are your own leader. You are your own competition, okay? Notice the snakes in the hands of the Minoan princes. Do you think of them as evil? Minoans honored this empowering creature, which like is like the umbilical cord, and it connects humans to the life source and represents sexuality and union with the divine. Your kundalini or life force energy lies coiled at the base of your spine like a serpent, okay? When it's fully awakened, either through meditation and the flows through your chakra and the energy centers, you will experience a state of bliss, okay? This is asking you, what are you willing to do in order to awaken your root chakra? What are you going to do to balance yourself through this year so that you can shed the skin of the serpents and move into who you really are? Shed the past to move forward. And then the six of shields is coming out as a physical way of how it's, what needs to happen to get out of that labyrinth, right? It's attributed to the card number six. And the six of shields, here's the giveaway dance. It's friendship, happiness, gift giving, sharing our wealth and ourselves with others. The way to get out of this maze, of this trap that you've set up or someone has set up for you, however you want to look at it, is to learn, to join the group, is to be a part of the group, give away your love freely, and you will get it back 10 times fold. And as you're it going through this process, the turtle comes out for you. And this is saying you're too fragmented. There's too many pieces going on. Be sure that you get very grounded and centered on what it is you want to manifest this year in order to move forward. All right. So let's jump into the read. That is just the theme, guys. And we are going to be using several oracle cards that I drew beforehand because you would really be tired of me because these videos take 45 minutes and it takes me another 30 minutes to pray over the cards and do everything. You would hate me. All right. So your theme for January, February and March is lizard. All right. What we need to leave behind is solitude and what we're looking for is sacred wisdom. All right. And these are the guidance that we're going to have. So with Lizard, it's telling you, what are your dreams? What are your visions? What do you, what do you really want to happen? And it's going to be really important the first three months of 2019 for you to really tap in to your dream life, okay? The Lizard is also representative of power, um, sexuality. It always represents money, those kinds of things, okay? Excuse me. Now... What to get rid of is this need of like, I'm just going to go be by myself because, you know, nobody else wants to, be, you know, since so-and-so doesn't want to be with me, I'm going to go be by myself. And so you're taking this beautiful energy that you house, Cancer, because you are a beautiful soul, all right? You're a very sensitive soul. Don't keep things so far away. Yes, it's important to pull back and get yourself centered. Yes, you're, you're going to need to meditate. Some of your meditations are going to be extremely strong where you will have visions. However, do not stay that way. Do not keep yourself locked away. You need, you need friends and family, okay? Now, sacred wisdom is what we need to initiate. And sacred wisdom is a really interesting card. This is about transitioning. If you see the moons on the top of there, I'm going to tell you the moons may have a lot to do with when your dreams become more powerful, and we'll talk about them as we go through each month. So this is telling you, you need to pay attention to your sleep patterns right now. You need to get enough sleep. You need to write those meanings of your dreams or things that you keep reoccurring. Keeping a dream journal will really help you. Keep your focus on the moment, not too much in the past. 
the lunar phases will affect you for some reason. It's going to have like a lot of energy on you. Now, this is telling you that there are certain things that need to go, go to the wayside and new things that need to come in. The white owl shares wisdom about traditional processes. There's something about creating a ritual for yourself, all right? Even if it's a ritual for bedtime so that you're getting more rest, a ritual to get yourself pumped up and go join other people, but something that's getting you there. When I say ritual, I'm not meaning like an elaborate thing. It could be like simply, okay, I need to be in bed by 10, so at nine o'clock, I'm gonna start winding down, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then your body starts knowing it's time to rest, it's time to sleep, or you create a new moon or a full moon ritual that you start following for yourself, all right? Now, by embracing your connections to the past, you can empower your future self with the knowledge and positive energy. Not like, oh, poor me, but okay, this happened, how can I move forward? All right, so let's bless our deck and see what we got going on. We're initiating new things. I rolled a one. Oh, some of us are getting over a fire sign or an earth sign because I, oh, see, look at this. I have on one side the King of Wands reversed, we have the Prince of Pentacles reversed, and then we have uh, the Gemini, the Lovers reversed. And we know we need to start over, but it's just hard, right? And that could represent a job, a family member, or a lover, right? Now, the Hermit is coming in, and that's the energy to deal with this. The Hermit says is going inside of yourself and find the answers, all right? So let's see what January has. It's the wheel. February, what's the energy for February for Cancer? Spirit Guide. And March. Let's see what we got for March. There we go. Two cards fell out. Let's see. <sighs> the universe reversed. There are a lot of cycles that need to stop. And I'm going to say be very aware of your online presence, what you're sending in text messages, how you're expressing yourself and who you're letting in your space and whose information you're accepting over this time, <sighs> especially in family situations. OK, now in January, we have the beautiful wheel bringing in new energy, telling us focus on your dreams, do what you got to do. And we have Venus entering into Sagittarius. Uranus goes direct at 28 degrees on the 6th. The 20th, the sun enters into Aquarius, and on the 21st, we have a full moon lunar eclipse at zero degrees Leo. So, thinking about that full moon lunar eclipse, look at what we're going to have to focus on. Oh, I just had two cards fall out. Let's see what they're about. First card is the star. Second card is the ace of cups. I'm going to say don't give up on your dreams. They are your dreams for a reason. And this is not being stuck in an illusion, but you see how she's presenting her cup, right? Be prepared that that cup that came in empty through 2018 or where you're feeling very empty, your cup will runneth over. Your cup will be fulfilled. The wheel is moving in the right direction. Venus may have caused some, uh, during the retrograde of Venus in 2018, it could have caused some breakups, shakeups, and, and makeups. But this is like the star of Venus is blessing your life, all right? And I said Venus enters into Sag. So Sagittarius, you might, you know, that's like really fun energy. You might be more loving and fun, okay? So hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the ace of cups from the past. You're going to move forward with this energy. Now, in February, we have um, a spirit guide coming in. And the spirit guide is about the materialistic, the money, the, um, the work, all that good stuff that we got to put into action, right? On the third, Venus enters into Capricorn. The new moon is in Aquarius. Mercury enters Pisces and the sun enters Pisces with a full moon in Virgo on the 19th at zero degrees. Again, it's that zero degree energy. So what you have to understand is what does zero represent? It means the slate, the a blank slate, right? We're starting over. So January, we have zero degrees Leo. We are redefining our strength and our courage to pull forward. On the 19th, we have zero degrees Virgo in February, right? And this is like, hey, let's get our stuff together. We need to get organized. We need to have a plan and we need to move forward. How are we going to make our dreams happen? And you have Archangel Michael coming in as your guidance for that month. There are some cords that need to be broken, literally broken 
from the root, okay? Meditating with Archangel Michael to come in, to open up your throat chakra, open up communication, and trusting that his energy is here to help heal. And although it hurts sometimes to cut things off and to stop doing certain things and certain activities, sometimes that's what needs to happen for us to be happier, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm answering myself like, oh yes, baby. Take notes, girl. That's what I'm telling myself. Take notes. <laughs> And you're going to do this with the energy of the cougar. This is like, be confident, okay? Be sexy, be sensual, be you, cougar. You got to do what you got to do, right? And it's about taking charge. No more letting everybody walk all over you. You're going to own it. You're going to be like, yeah, that didn't work, and I'm moving on. All right, because this is also knowing that you are taking a form of leadership. The cougar talks about being a leader. You are ready to lead the pack. Now, in March, on the 5th, we have Mercury retrograde. On the 6th, a new moon in Pisces. On the 20th, the sun enters into Aries and a full moon in Libra at zero degrees. On the 28th, Mercury goes direct. So March has Mercury retrograde in it. Communication needs to be wrapped up, all right? We need to watch the way we're communicating because we had the um, princess of arrows at the bottom. I'm going to tell you, be very careful what you put out there because it can come back to get you in March. Now, we have the universe reversed, we have an ending. I think you had the confidence to make a decision. It didn't end the way that you thought it should end. So we get to start over. You know, we can focus on the ending or we can say, hey, let's move forward, let's do something different. These animal cards just wanna be used. So how will we deal with this ending? <laughs> you are provided for, some of y'all will be leaving a job, taking a different position in leadership, having the confidence to move forward and know that you will have love, you will be, you are lovable, you will have love, you will have blessings financially, and that you're open and ready to receive because that's what your dreams are telling you in the first three months of the year, okay? Um, let's go into April, May, and June as I flip the page. <sighs> Deep breath. You know what? I want to see a little bit more on the ending. And okay, there it is. I want I'm gonna use this to give us an example of what might be ending for. I almost said Taurus. Some of y'all may be ending something with a Taurus. I almost said Taurus. So we have the Warrior of Blades, and here's the Ace of Cups reversed. So you know, at the beginning, I was talking about releasing relationships that no longer serve us. I think it's just gonna be like a a, a really quick decision. We're done with these um, love situations where you're offering your cup and they're not receiving it and you're going to walk away from it with confidence, okay? Now, the warrior of blades, he ain't giving a damn dirty do about what's going on. He's going with his confidence. Even though the matriarch of vessels is standing there, I'm going to tell you, I feel like the matriarch of vessels is kind of saying to you, watch your emotions in March. Now, especially online, okay? Sometimes people say things and we're not really in our right frame of mind or we'll say things and it comes off the wrong way and then four months later, someone pulls it up and uses it against us. So watch how you're saying things online. I wanna give you a little bit more about the matriarch of vessels. These are qualities that become distorted because usually it's about following her vision and her dreaminess. So do not stay in a situation that's taking your joy just because you're afraid. Um, everything she receives is degraded or refracted generally in her character is dependent in the influence around her. Watch what's going on in March. March may be one of those times for you where you get in your feelings because Mercury retrograde may bring back a fire sign, okay? Or an air sign is what I'm getting. Somebody's coming back. You don't have to take them back. You have the confidence that the universe is ending it for a reason and you're ready to move forward, all right? Now, let's go into April, May, and June. Hopefully that helps. Your theme in April is <laughs> the moose. You got the moose is loose. I just love the moose. And this is about you knowing what's best for you. You might go and ask people for advice. You might go and say this and say that. But the truth of the matter is that you already know what you need to do. You are the one in control of the situation. How to stay motivated is unconditional love. Unconditional love for yourself and for others. I had a reading done and this lady explained forgiveness in such a beautiful way. Her name is Harmonic Healer. She's also on YouTube, check her out. I absolutely love her. 
And she talked about learning to forgive ourselves is like multiplying forgiveness tenfold. Because once we learn to forgive ourselves, we have more compassion that other people are people too and going through the gigs just like us. But this is unconditional love for yourself and others. That's how to stay motivated because you already know what you've got to do. Now, there's something about the dove coming in for you. The dove was on the leadership card and now the dove is right here on rest. And if you look in the back, we have the deer here too. So this may be a family issue, all right? And she's sitting there, she's reading her book and she's feeling all kinds of stuff. You have got to rest. What happens is you're emotionally beating yourself up, Cancer. Read a good book, start journaling, get those thoughts and ideas on paper and move forward because you already know what needs to be done. This will be a foundational time. I rolled a four, I cut the deck and look, we're not listening to our spirit guide and there's a baby deer and then we have the sun reversed. So watch your health during this time. Also be very careful with communication. All right, so let's see what's going on in April. We have a spirit guide. Bye. You might be seeing a lot of white feathers, okay? White feathers. Oh, don't be impatient. Oh, may God is, may God is impatient. <laughs> All right, water sign. Now, Cancer, we are dealing with this Capricornish like energy, but this is releasing the burden. I almost want to tell you that there will be a karmic relationship for some that will be coming to an extreme end because you're done with it. You're finished with the situation and you're ready to go. Now, in April, we have a blessing coming in. We have on the 10th, Jupiter goes retrograde into Sag. Full moon in Libra. The sun goes into Taurus. And on the 24th, we have a Pluto retrograde and the 29th, a Saturn retrograde. However, you have a spirit guide coming in. The spirit guide is blessing the situation, is trying to make things move forward. What kind of energy will they need in April? Oops, that flew out. Look at this. The deer just flew out. Trust your instincts. There's something about the deer. The deer's unconditional love in the family. There may be a need for you to really get in touch with your family. There's something with the moose and the deer. These antlers are very important. Some of y'all might have like um, things with antlers in your house that mean a lot to you. I'm not telling you to go and like pray by it, but put yourself around things that remind you of family, all right? Now, trust your instincts in the month of April. Let's see what else is going down in April. Did, uh, two of Cups comes in upright about damn time. Come on, Cancer. We got a partnership. We got a friendship. We got a love ship coming in. Two, two, baby. I'm going to see if one more card comes out to show us. There it is. Ten of Wands reversed. All right, so the Two of Cups is coming in to help us lighten the load that we have, okay? Some of us may be dealing with a fire sign because we have this Leo Sagittarius Aries, more attributed to Leo with the Ten of Wands. But this Two of Cups is saying, look, there is a partnership that is coming in during the month of April that is going to lessen the load. Trust your instincts and go for it, all right? You don't have to... I'm sorry, I keep breathing real hard. You don't have to like be afraid that it's gonna be the same kind of situation, all right? So what do they need to know about the situation? Reflection. This is you pulling back, I'm gonna tell you, possibly around the full moon in Libra on the 19th. Pull back, reassess the situation before we move into Taurus season and these Pluto and Saturn retrogrades at the end of the month. Make sure this partnership is what you really want. You are the one ultimately deciding, all right? Everybody is on a different path, baby. Now, in May, we have temperance reversed. I think sometimes what happens is we get anxious and we get excited and our patience starts to fail us, okay? There's, there was no real roots going on. And I'm going to get more for us. In May, we have a lot of Taurus energy coming in. New moon in Taurus on the 4th. On the 6th, Mercury enters into Taurus. Venus enters into Taurus on the 15th. Full moon in Scorpio on the 27th. The sun enters into Gemini on the 21st. Now, we're not feeling grounded. So let's see what we can do to get more grounded. 
Okay, we're gonna go with this butterfly deck. Hopefully it's nothing too crazy that comes up. Show us what Cancer needs to know. Sometimes these cards just, they say some crazy things to me. I'm like, I didn't know about that. You will be meditating more with your third eye or your crown chakra. You will be asking for more information. I'm going to tell you there's some, for some of you cancers out there, be sure that you're paying attention to things soberly, okay? Not a lot of drinking when things are going wrong, okay? Let's, let's keep our mind focused on what's going ahead. And no, I'm not calling anybody an alcoholic, so get out your feelings. Now, keeping the faith is going to be important for you to get grounded because you're going to want something to flourish really quickly and it's not getting there. So it's going to be important for you to keep the faith and believe that good things are coming your way because you're applying rest and unconditional love throughout this month because you know that you already know what needs to happen. So let's get a little bit more on that card. Courage, seven of wands, definitely dealing with some fire sign energy. And I'm going to tell you, whoever this Virgo is, because it's possibly a Virgo, because I have this at the bottom of the deck, um, have the courage to walk away from this person if they are greedy, presenting themselves in a way, I almost feel like they're going to come and ask you for money. Just don't. You're not the bank, okay? You're not the bank, Cancer. Don't give them the money. Now, I don't even know why I'm saying that, but just walk away. You ain't got no time for it, all right? In June... New moon in Gemini, 12 degrees on the 3rd. 17th, full moon in Sag, 25 degrees. 18th, the Saturn sextile Neptune. And then on the 21st, Neptune will go retrograde in Pisces. Lots of dreamy energy. On the 21st, it's your season, Cancer. However, we're not feeling something. We're either dealing with a water sign who is um, a little down for an adventure of all kinds, or we've lost our passion about something, okay? Now... Let me get a little bit more to help us with this prince. So I have rest is needed. You are not resting. Two fours. So 44 for the month of June might be an important number for you, or fours are a really important number. The number 44 for me in a read usually signifies this is a safe and secure time to move forward. This is a great time to take a break and allow new energy to come in. This is being open to a fire sign, possibly coming in to help. You have a lot of fire sign energy during the second half of the year. And let's see how to work with this Prince of Cups reversed. We have two cards coming out and it's orphaned. So we're feeling like, oh, it's a karmic issue. Every time we get close to somebody, this always happens to us. Some of y'all may even be asking yourself, am I ever gonna get married? <laughs> What's going on? What is this about? And then before you know it, you have an emperor coming in that says, hey, take a break. Let's take a load off. Let's relax a little bit. And the meaning of this card is identity crisis. Um, uncertainty about where you belong and you're shifting and you're evolving to commit it to a, to a relationship but now you're questioning is this really for me are they really going to stick around and so this would be a good time to pull back in June reassess the situation and allow some things to calm down okay because I don't know what happened in May but May, there was some things that made you doubt the situation and the person, all right? So pull back a little bit during the second half of the year. Now, we're moving into July, August, and September, and all I got to say, big baby, is y'all just put on your big girl panties and big boy panties, and let's go face July together, because July's a hot mess, all right? July's a hot mess. <laughs> like summertime. The theme is intimacy, all right? Ooh, just dropping cards everywhere. Let me pull out the spread. What we must stop and which we must continue. And they're the same thing almost. And look, I tell you about the dove. The dove has came out three times for you. When, let me look up dove real quick on the Nahuali, okay? Because I just feel like I really want to share with you what dove stands for. Do, 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 D O V E. Nanwali is a different deck that I use, but I love the way they describe animal energy. The essential needs for peace and harmony. Okay, that is what we have to stop fighting. We have to allow harmony to come together. And it wants your attention to be directed to how to take care of your essential needs. 
What, okay, in a relationship, what are your basic needs that you need in a relationship to feel secure? What are your basic needs to survive? What are you, and everyone defines those things differently. So this is why Dove is saying, stop rushing from situation to situation, sit down, find your peace of mind, take a break, breathe, slow down. And remember that a dove always arrives when the storm is over. The storm has passed cancer. Now it's time to relax. And you have this beautiful card of intimacy coming through. Intimacy in this deck, it's, it's not like what you're probably thinking, like, oh, it's about to go down. It might. It might go down. But intimacy is you being able to be who you are with somebody, really sharing yourself with them, right? Now, being open to new experiences, honoring yourself, and even if you're in a relationship at this time, you're being asked to look at how you're communicating with this person. Is there mutual respect? Are you both being heard? This is re-evaluating the way that you see intimacy and love. So fearing to share your thoughts and feelings and body images and mindsets that you have, that may be affecting your relationship even with yourself. This is telling you to call back your energy. Take some time. Observe the situation from a distance and you see him looking at that new moon and I'm gonna explain to you what this new moon is about to be bringing in for us all right cancer this I feel like if the, if your theme is love this year I would recommend really thinking about what a healthy relationship looks like not what you want the person to look like but what you want the relationship to look like having a very clear definitive idea of what you will tolerate and what you won't no matter how frizzy and fine the person is okay because sometimes those beautiful eyes will get you in a situation that you don't need to be in this is that pivotal moment where you've sat down and you've made changes all right now on the second of july we have a new moon total solar eclipse in your sign 10 degrees listen to this. this is my favorite day july 3rd i'm on countdown venus enters into cancer hey mercury retrograde on the 7th four degrees leo a chiron retrograde on five degrees aries on the 8th then the 16th we have a full moon partial lunar eclipse in capricorn 24 degrees then it's Leo season on the 22nd. Ha! Venus enters into Leo. Hey! The 27th. And on the 31st, we have a new moon, 8 degrees. So we have two new moons in July. Okay? And then Mercury goes direct on the 31st with that new moon. So there's a lot of new moon energy, new intentions, new energy coming in. And you might need to sit down and take a break. Okay? One, two, three. Cut the deck. Let me see. You are coming into full control. You are communicating. You might be signing contracts. You might be signing a marriage contact, uh, contract, a business contract. But this is about making peace with being in control. Show me July for cancer. July for cancer. Oh, I had... Oh, that was too many cards. July. Show me July for cancer. What is going on for cancer in July? What is... Okay, there it is. We're learning skills. Look at you, Cancer. <laughs> learning some new skills. I don't know why y'all do it upside down, but okay. We'll figure it out. We'll see what's going on. And this is predictive energy. This So sometimes when I tell you, oh, and this can happen to kind of alter. It's not like I'm trying to tell you to change your life. I'm just saying a different perspective can change the way your card falls. All right. And there's that fire sign. I don't know who y'all dealing with. But you feel like your new beginning is taking too damn dirty long. It's like, what? What? Hurry up, new beginning. So in July, you are watching the stars. You are paying attention. You might even be going into like an apprenticeship with someone where you're studying and learning from them because there's two people on this card. And you're looking out at these beautiful cycles and stars. And it's beautiful out there, right? You're learning a lot in July. A lot, a lot. Let's see what's going on. Okay, that was a lot of cards. You're learning about a loss, okay? There was a loss that you had. You do have some regret over this loss and it's attributed to the number 55. In July, 55 might be an important number for you. Now, the thing that's coming in with this Two of Cups, and I love this story because this is where Gilgamesh lost his best friend, right? But then he realizes, I'm gonna go on an adventure. So this is when you start taking notes, baby, you start booking plane tickets and you start saying, you know what, 
I'm not gonna sit over here and cry over spilled meat, 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 milk. <laughs> Some of y'all might be crying over spilled meat. Um, spilled milk, I'm moving forward, I'm going on. I'm gonna make peace with the situation and I'm gonna go, all right? Some of y'all gonna be playing with some trips, I feel. Five of Cups, what's going on with the Five of Cups? You're ready to take a chance. You're gonna take a leap of faith. You're gonna do what you gotta do to get what you want. You're like, I'm done waiting. I've learned some new skills and I'm moving on up, right? Now the two princesses during this quarter, this July, August, September, you're gonna be receiving information. This information does not necessarily have to be a negative information, but this is information that's coming in that's almost like, whoa, I, w I didn't see that coming, right? Because remember, you're the observer. And look at this, I forgot to point this out. That just came to my head. See how he has a telescope here? And he, he has a telescope here? I'm gonna tell you, don't be watching nobody. Somebody might be watching you. Be very aware of your surroundings. And no, I'm not trying to scare you, but it's like, be very aware that people see everything that, you know, and that whatever you're seeing, they're seeing. All right, what's going on in August? We have a lot of cards flying out. I almost wanna use all of them. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, okay, all right, let me see. Let me see, make sure, yeah, reverse, no. Mm-hmm. Reversed. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is a you you have got the two of cups like so many times it feels like. You got aces of cups, two of cups. There is going to be a union. Okay, but we have the nine of pipes with the seven of blades. Alright. So this is what I'm getting. There is some defiance going on. Almost like, you know what, bro? Not today. You're not taking what I got. This is my, this is my life. And <laughs> she's taking the horse back. You can take your horse. I'm taking my horse and I'm going to find the person I'm going to be with. So in like August, you're like, no, even though you're hurt, you're going to reach out and you're going to make friends. And I'm going to say possibly with a fire sign because there she is waiting for you. Okay. Now. In August, we have some beautiful energy. We have Jupiter going direct in Sagittarius, 14 degrees. Mercury enters into Leo on the same day, and Uranus goes retrograde in Taurus. On the 11th, okay, this energy, be just out of random energy. You don't even know what's going to go on. Uranus is, is the trickster. He likes to do crazy things. Something out of the ordinary could happen. You might just meet somebody. You might just have a breakup. You might just walk away from something and take all your stuff and go with someone else. All right. Now, the 15th, we have a full moon in Aquarius. The sun enters into Virgo. And then we have a new moon in Virgo on the 30th at six degrees. What's really interesting is, is like I see two people going their separate ways. And then by the end of the month, I see two people coming together. Okay. So this, for me, that's really interesting. Nine seven eight and nine so if i add nine and nine together that's 18 which comes down to a nine there's going to be a completion either you're going to completely stay or you're going to completely go and this could be in business and this could be in love all right but there is a union coming this time of the year for you just be on the lookout because you got a new attitude what now <laughs> i'm excited all right, Cancer, you're waking the F up, okay? You are getting up, you're facing what's going on, and you're ready for new life. Some of you guys may be getting pregnant or getting somebody else pregnant, okay? But there's a baby coming. Something's being birthed, a business, a partnership, a baby. And I say that every time when I say birth because I'll always get the same comments and be like, okay, well, you can birth other things and just Anyways, look how she's coming out. I feel like you're gonna be going out, you're done being in the house, and you're ready. I think you've healed, yay, cancer. And then in September, we have this beautiful energy with the princess of wands coming in, shining bright, looking bright, full bloom, right? Now, full moon in Pisces on the 21st, I mean on the 14th at 21 degrees, Saturn goes direct on the 18th and the sun enters into Libra. And here we have this beautiful young lady just standing there looking exquisite, right? Let me see what your deck wants to be. Okay. And I want to see what she wants you to know. I feel like in September. Oh, there he comes. Do, 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 do. Ooh. Ha, ah. <laughs> ha. Hey. You got, a little, you got a little love interest or female interest, depending on what you got going on. And then we have this new beginning. However, you're going to feel real imbalanced. All right. So we have this energy coming in and telling you, hey, 
Slowly, here he comes. You're speaking your truth. Things are moving in order, and you're ready for a new beginning. In September, you may be starting school. That's usually what happens. Starting a new relationship, a new partnership, starting a new practice for yourself, but something new is coming in for you. All right, how do they greet it? One more, and then I'm going to move because my battery is about to die. Okay. Now, are we already on the fourth part of the year? <sighs> Moving on into October, baby. October, we got a lot of... October, you, you, um, if you're trying to get pregnant in October, just might happen, all right? Because you got a lot of baby energy with just your theme. Your, thing, your theme is resolve. You're going to start getting through those obstacles. This is elephant energy. Y'all, I always say this when the elephant comes out, baby, okay? Don't get offended. Elephants are known for fertility because they have the largest genitals in the animal kingdom. Does not trying to be disgusting. I'm saying there's they're large, all right? And they are ready to break through obstacles, fertilizing you. They're also very, um, I want to say sensitive, like because their feet feel the vibrations before their ears even hear it. Your empath abilities may be heightened. Your spidey senses are gonna be heightened so that these obstacles get out of your way. It makes me think of Ganesh, all right? So, how to move forward is stop effing around, okay? Stop messing around with things that aren't for you. That's how you're gonna get through those obstacles, but you're gonna do something even better, Cancer, because you are amazing. You're gonna do it with compassion. See, there's something beautiful about your energy, and a lot of people misread it. They think, oh, she's just weak, or he's just weak. Oh, they're a weirdo. They, they always get their feelings hurt, but the thing is, you're very sensitive to things, especially this moon energy. Now, Compassion you always have for others, but it's time to apply that compassion to yourself and say, you know what, this really isn't for me, this person isn't for me, this game isn't for me, this job isn't for me, and I'm ready to move forward. And this is literally Quan Yin, birthing new things into your life. And that's why I say babies, new things, birth, 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 like chickens hatching, everything beautiful coming towards the end of the year. And I've noticed that a lot of reads even personal reads these last three months before we hit 2020 we're setting ourselves up for a beautiful beautiful time all right so i'm going to tell you stay in your meditations stay with those pearls of wisdom make sure that you're enjoying the colors of life okay so that you can move through this energy that's going to be going down october Pluto goes direct on the third mercury enters into scorpio the third venus enters into scorpio the eighth Full moon in Aries on the 20th, and the sun enters Scorpio on the 23rd, 31st. We're back at Mercury retrograde, okay? And let's cut the deck. I have going on the nine of pentacles with the six of pentacles reversed. For me, that's nine and six. So it's like yin-yang energy. You could say 69, however you want to say it. But what I'm feeling with that is balance is going to be needed. Invest in yourself and don't rely on the help of someone else to move forward. King of Pentacles, yeah, yeah. King of Pentacles in October. He's coming to fertilize, baby. <laughs> then in November, we have the Tower. Gosh, dog and cancer. It's like you got a good month and then bam. Good month and bam. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm just like, whoa. I know you're like, this lady right here, she is horrible. I'm not really a mean person, I promise. Oh, there's that Nine of Wands energy. You're going to come out alive. And you're done. You're walking away from something, someone, somebody. Possibly a family situation. Possibly Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. All right? Don't give them the money. Now, King of Pentacles is coming in in October. And I almost want to see if this is a relationship. What's going on here? Let's go to the Byzantine. Let's see. I got two cards. So you got the Nine of Staffs and the Nine of Wands. Very similar cards. And the Four of Cups came out reversed. So this King of Pentacles is telling you that in October, stand your ground. You see, this is the Nine of Staffs, which is just like the Nine of Wands in this deck. Oh, I can't see it. Let me pull it over. There we go. So this is what the King is telling you, right? Stand tall. Don't give up. You got it, baby. You got it. And then the Four of Cups is saying, walk away from things that aren't bringing you joy. It's time for you to be happy. And then you have the High Priest is just putting the icing on the cake saying buttercup what's up we're ruling the situation what's interesting is Kwan Yin um, see Kwan Yin's hand and then look at her hand look at Sophia's hand 
very similar, like hand gestures, something about a goodbye, something about a meditation, a mudra might be needed, okay? I ain't no mudra specialist, all right? So you might have to Google that. Now, that's what's going on in October. You come out shining and you break it all down in November, baby. You're getting that tower situation, elephants coming through, big baby, making things fall. I feel like it's like shaking and breaking things, just like making it come on down, but in a good way. I don't feel like the tower is always negative. Anyways, the first Venus enters into Sag, the 12th full moon in Taurus, 19 degrees. The 20th Mercury goes direct. New moon in Sag on the 26th. And then on the 27th, we're starting to see things clearly now because Neptune goes direct. Okay. What is going on with, there we go, with the tower? Okay. 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 Nothing we got here. It says that one. Let me see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. How about this one? No. Okay. So you're getting the shaman, all right? And this is the Hierophant, similar to the Hierophant. It's the medicine man, medicine woman. When things fall apart, I'm going to tell you, watch your back, too. Well, like, physically. Not like watch your back because someone's going to stab it. But, like, watch your health during November, all right? Especially your back. You might be having to go to a practitioner. This might be a good month to start um, opening up your practitioner business, breaking ground, um, going to see a practitioner. However, I don't know if you remember the leadership card that had the, the um, Indian chief on it. Well, the Indian chief is showing back up in November. So some of y'all who have started a career in spirituality or are starting an herbal business or something of that nature, in November, the people will be coming to you for healing because they have the two little children there, right? And so the shaman is guiding you and telling you inner confidence. Even if it looks like it's falling apart, you fought long and hard, you're moving forward, okay? Now, this leads us into December. In December, on the 2nd, Jupiter enters into Capricorn. On the 8th, Jupiter squares Chiron. 12th, full moon in Gemini. Chiron goes direct with Aries. Sun enters into Capricorn on the 21st. And we finish the year with a new moon annular solar eclipse in Capricorn, 4 degrees. And you remember the Nine of Wands, you, the, the Nine of Staffs, you were on top of that hill, like, yeah, baby, here I am. Well, by December, you done got the, you got the giggle, okay? You got the head, you got the, you got the everything you need, and you're leaving. It doesn't mean that you didn't have to fight for it. It didn't mean that you didn't have to go through anything for it. You are going to come out successful, is what that's saying with the Nine of Wands. Let me give you a little bit more with the Nine of Wands, moving us into 2020. You have a lot of a wand energy. This is going to be a year of action for you. You're going to find yourself in a situation that seems very similar. Do not panic. You will move forward because you have used your past to help you through. It ties right back into that labyrinth card. Remember at the beginning with Nose, it's telling you, you can see yourself out with your mind's eye. If you've been practicing your meditations, if you've been praying, if you've been seeking that holistic help, you will come out victorious. All right? It's a lot of talking. So let's do a love for love for the year of 2019 you are about to break away i think some of y'all hooking up with fire signs all right cancer i think y'all want damn dirty leo sagittarius or aries kind of energy in your life <laughs> and there and i see you going towards a like-minded community where you will be celebrated capricorn is also doing the same thing capricorn's theme was all about Community and I feel like both of y'all are going through similar things. Yours is like an emotional community. You're looking to be accepted and theirs is like I want to I want to fit in my family. I want to fit in my job. I want to fit into society and you're just like I just want to fit into somebody's heart. All right. That's what I'm getting now with work you have treasure island and with this this is basically telling you have the turtle again you got it together you realize your gift your gem your gold you're um a wonderful and beautiful and you are everything all right so you're dealing with the law of attraction when it comes to your career and your money and i do feel like you'll be blessed financially because of all those hearts that are coming into your gold now an interesting card that you got for health is that of the skunk <laughs> I'm going to tell you, buddy, don't bite off more than you can chew. So the story of the skunk is that he went hunting with the jaguar, right? And he saw the jaguar take down a huge animal. And he was like, I can do that. Mm -mm. He got his tail beat, all right? 
And he was telling his mama, don't worry, I got it. I'm going to get it. And his mom, she would not listen to his mother. So, in turn, the skunk never came back home. All right? Now, this is not about jumping off a bridge, not that you are, or taking any kind of financial risk or health risk. All right? The skunk is here to warn you about repercussions with arrogance. If someone says, hey, I really think you need to go to the doctor, I really think this needs to happen, don't ignore it, all right? Trust the warning, because if not, you're going to end up like the skunk, all right? But the stone that talks about your health, these are things to pay attention to this year. Your heart, your chest, and your lungs, your thymus gland. Rose quartz strengthens the immune system and relieves impurities from the bodies. It's also about your kidneys, adrenals, and fertility, and it helps to keep um, disease away. Now, rose quartz replaces negative energies with a release of love and emotions, and it will enhance unconditional love, harmony, and re in relationships. This card signifies that love will soon enter your life, either as a romantic gift or in a way that will help you heal from past wounds to move on. I feel heart chakra will be very strong for you this year, whether it is in a physical or an emotional or spiritual way. Protect your heart chakra with an amulet. Work on opening up your heart to love, learning to love yourself, and moving forward. All right, Cancer, that is your read, big baby. Big, big hugs. Lots and lots of love, guys. And if you're interested in a read, hit me up at arianaluciano at gmail.com or on the gram at arianaluciano. Be blessed, fam.